Good evening from GWL's depot in Reading. Behind me is the Class 230, 230 That's their battery train. And tonight, a world record attempt is taking place. To fit in with it being Railway 200, we're going to see and set, hopefully, a new world record of taking this battery train 200 miles. So the current record for longest distance by a battery train is 139 miles, set by Stadler in Berlin in December 2021. But tonight, GWR's battery train is making an overnight trip, leaving Reading train care depot, where it will travel down to London Paddington, then Paddington to Oxford, which should be exactly 100 miles at halfway, then back to Paddington before the final reverse run back from Paddington to Reading, which should be exactly 200 miles, beating the previous record by 61 miles. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle on the train right now. There's lots of people on board. We're gonna chat to them as the night goes on. Yes, night. This is an all-night operation. We're pulling an all-nighter, so by tomorrow morning, we'll all be looking a little bit more tired and jaded. We'll find out who's driving the train, who's on board the train. The fun part is, is that when we get to Oxford to turn around, that should be exactly halfway, the 100-mile mark, and then we'll just reverse and repeat our journey. And am I right in thinking we're going up, we're going up the main line? We're not going up the relief lines. So we're taking the battery train on the main line. Now we're waiting until around midnight for all general passenger services to come to an end for the day before we start. But at 10.30, we make a tentative positioning move within the depot to prepare ourselves and get ready. And those few meters do count towards the total. And so how are we keeping track of how far we've traveled and what our battery percentage is? I will chat to the official team later, but they've also kindly set up this little iPad like a control panel on, which is essentially showing what the battery is at, currently 97.3, because we've started, so it's dropped a little bit, uh, and the distance traveled so far. Uh, and there's our GPS location and some more information there, which will, will update and change throughout the night. And just after midnight, it's time to get underway properly. It's 10 past midnight. Nice reflection, Jeff. Yeah, I'm worried about how much darkness there's gonna be. Lots of reflections when it's light inside, dark outside. We'll see how it goes, and we are on the move heading for Reading. We make a quick stop at Reading to pick up some more people and then I chat to Tim Dunn who's also on board. GWR's fast charge battery technology is new but battery trains themselves do go back several years. Do you like this battery train? I think it's, a, it's an extremely good example of battery train. Now battery trains have been around since the middle of the last century. In fact, I mean, the very first electric train was built in Scotland, the very first, world's first electric train, but battery trains were used by BR. They had some test BR units, right, back in the 1950s, the lightweight units they trialled up in Scotland as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. No, there, was, there was quite a successful battery DM, it was a, a BEM, that ran on the Ballata branch back in the, I think it was the late 50s, early 60s, I can't remember which exactly. The world record does stand over 139 miles. So when we pass 139 miles we're later, gonna go, woo. we should have a little woo moment. All right. I've bought donuts. We'll, we'll go, we'll, woo donuts. He has bought donuts. Right, thanks, Tim. Okay, I was really worried with the lights out. I was not going to be able to film, but it, it's it's really cool. Like the lighting, it's this sort of ambient lighting effect is really great. So we're gonna. I just realised we're gonna get a shot of the train in at the platform at Paddington, and then at Oxford, I have the best gag in the world lined up when we get to Oxford, which is going to be around 3 a.m. and it's only midnight 30. This is great. This is so great. So this is the onboard mission control team. They're very carefully monitoring our progress as we go along. There's also GoPros attached and other cameras recording the whole journey so that GWR have that as a record as well. But I'm interested in knowing how many batteries are on board and what our projected usage might be. So when we get to Paddington, I catch up with Julian for a few moments. So uh, on the screen here, you can see we've got all six batteries uh, are showing and uh, we've been running this one down deliberately, that's uh, battery number two on driving motor car A. Um, and right now, as it's getting nice and low, we've then put on battery number two on driving motor B car, and we're gonna overlap them, and then once one drops out, next one's on, and we're away. So the important bit is this tiny little bit at the top here, where you can see it says 637 watt hours. So, and you, can you see that right at the top there? And that means that our overall efficiency is 637 watt hours per carriage mile, which is five times more efficient than normal operation on the Greenfield branch line. That's why we can do 200 miles. We leave Paddington on time just after 1 a.m. Our next stop in two hours' time is Oxford, just before three.
As we arrive at Oxford, it occurs to me that as a Class 230 old D-stock tube train, is this actually a case of the Oxford tube? It's, uh, it's 2.55 in the morning. There's a Chawton train there. <laughs> Our train is here. We're just over exactly halfway, 101 miles. And we've still got around 59, 60% battery left. I also want to know who's planned this route. How do you make it happen that a battery train can be at Oxford at 3 a.m. in the morning? And earlier in the depot, before we set off, I spoke to the man who'd made that part happen. When we start out with the train planning process, we have to go to network rail. We come up with a sequence of uh, timings, which make up a schedule yep. and the timing load for this particular train. So I, I put all of these timings into our system. I validate against all of the freight schedules that might be running, all of our schedules that might be running well, all the, of one, our the ones that are already known absolutely yeah. yes so all of the WTT the working timetable yeah. schedules and then I uh, I send this bid to network rail and network rail will compare our schedule to all the other operators and then from there they will either offer us the path and yeah. say this is your path there's no changes required or they might come back to us and say actually you've clashed with this operator you okay. need to change as we depart Oxford I also chat to the team from the railway performance society they're an organisation dedicated to recording and studying the performance of railways and railway traction. And they have their timings and GPS logs during our trip to accurately record how far we've travelled. And it's not long after I spoke to them that I note that our batteries have got down to 50%, at which point our total distance is 129 miles. So does that mean, multiplying that by two, that our ultimate range of this trip could be 258 miles? In case you're wondering, GWR did kindly provide some sandwiches and drinks and snacks and also yeah the toilet is working and around 4 a.m we're on the move between maidenhead and slough and the whole team gather around for this special moment where we all realize we're going to beat the previous record distance half a mile to go this is a moment where we're going to hit 139 which will match the record and then hit uh, 140 miles which will surpass and be the new record and every mile that we add on top of that will then extend that new record. Quarter of a mile, get ready. Yeah! New world record set beating 139 miles, and now it was just a case of getting to the end and getting to 200 miles. We're three quarters through. I've just realized that the iPad screen, which they've nicely provided, that you can just you can just lift them up. So I could just hold it to the camera like that. So at 150 miles in, we've still got 42% of battery left. So we're easily going to make 200 miles, easily. Uh, did you see where we popped in? Where were we? What was our last station? We're around Hamwell, Southall, yeah, yeah, somewhere. Hamwell. Okay. And sunrise is going to be in around an hour's time at five five thirty. Back on platform fourteen. If I check my watch, it is four fifty-eight now, and we're going to sit here for fifteen minutes, which is probably time to get a drink. If the coffee shops are open and then we head back to Reading and you know bar a catastrophic failure which is not going to happen we're going to do it we're going to get our 200 miles which is excellent Fast train. It's 5.33, uh, light has started to appear in the sky as uh, the day breaks and the dawn rises and we're at 33% battery power, so we're down to a third. We're easily going to make the 200 miles, we're easily going to get to Reading. I think there'll be a little bit of a fun celebration. Uh, we're all very tired, but um, it's been a great night. And as we get back towards Reading, our total number of miles in the year of Railway 200 reaches 200. Mr. Dunn there just doing his live piece for TV, so that is 200. It is 6.16 in the morning. 
We've been given an ETA of just nine more minutes, should get back to the depot at 6.25. Just remains to be seen now what our final tally is. We've gone over the 200 mark. It'll be 200 and something, and that'll be the new world record. Uh, just going over some points. Uh, well, we're currently at around 201, and uh, we're, I'd say, maybe 100 metres off, so we're I think this is our, our final value we will we will just get to 201 plus or minus a little bit. And what's the final battery total? So final battery total is 22.7% which means we could go another 58 miles or so if we carried on without running out. Mm -hmm. And is that one battery untouched? And yeah. yet one battery we've not even used out of the six, never touched. So new distance world record set, what does this mean for the future? of battery drains. I've been up all night, it's early, it's <laughs> 7 a.m. but I've met Simon Green. You're the engineering director. Yes, right? I am, yes. You're excited, obviously, yeah. well, well done. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, cl clearly we are, we are excited. Um, it's a brilliant achievement by the team. Yeah. I think to beat the record, well, actually, to beat it by a significant difference, distance, and have some uh, uh, juice left in the tank. Right. Uh, and we could have gone a bit further if we really wanted to. Further, yeah. yes. And the obvious question is, is well, like, so what now? What, what's the roadmap, sort of six months, 12 months, you know, a couple of years from now? What, what do you want to see happen? So, as you'll be aware, Great Western operates a number of yeah. old uh, DMU trains that are coming up for replacement. What this demonstrates, really, is the ability of the battery technology to be a viable replacement for diesel trains in the future and that we will need some form of infrastructure investment as well as uh, rolling stock investment but I think what we can demonstrate and what this, this run really demonstrates in a fun way you know in a nice possible way is that this is now viable it's within reach we would expect not only for Great Western but for other operators potentially to replace diesel trains with battery electric in the future um, subject obviously to the usual caveats around investment being available uh, to take us take the railway and the passenger railway forward in that way um, for the next you know for the future decades so that's how to ride 200 miles on a battery train, a new record. Uh, people are just wrapping up, there's a few things going on. I need to go home and get some sleep, obviously. My thanks uh, to GWR and to everybody here that was involved. That was a great night, a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.